Well, in my first book, Righteous Pork Chop, I, I kind of go through this whole um, comparison between traditional farming where manure was an incredibly important asset because when you're thinking about um, food production from an ecosystem standpoint, you really have to think about all of uh, the nutrients and how they're utilized by all of the living entities, the plants and the animals, and then how they're returned or not returned back to the soils to be either regenerative or to be depleted. And when you have traditional farming systems, there's a lot more of that versus today, especially the animal sector in the United States and, and much of the world, um, you have a complete segmentation. You have a separation where the feed is grown and then it's transported to the animals. And then there's so much manure. There's so much, I mean, this is a little bit different when you're talking about cattle for beef, but in much of the animal food industry, especially dairy, pigs, and chickens and turkeys, you, you have so much uh, concentration of the animals and then you have to transport the manure um, away from the place where the animals are. And so you just have this um, complete separation of the resource, the natural resources and the land and the animals. It's not, it's not a connected and regenerative system. So um, what's great about cattle on pasture, whether they're part of a dairy system or a beef system, is that you have that whole cycle taking place. You have um, the capture of the solar energy in the vegetation that's coming up out of the ground, and then the animals are using that. They're using, in most cases, naturally occurring forages, which are things that humans and most other animals cannot use for nutrition. They're converting it miraculously, really, to meat and milk, and then humans are using that food. And as those animals are growing and living on that space, they're not only returning the manure, but they're also returning their urine. And I, I was reading some research recently from Australia where they were quantifying when you have t um, animals, cattle on grasslands, they get between typically 70 to 90 percent of their water comes from the growing vegetation. I mean, it depends on the season and on the lands that you're on. But um, so you're actually utilizing the resources in that ecosystem in a much more sensible way than animals that are being separated from the land. So yes, manure on a pasture-based farm is, is a cause for celebration. Nicolette Hahn Nyman is author of Defending Beef. We're talking about cows and cattle at Climate One. I'm Greg Dalton. Uh, Wendy Silver, uh, compost can come into the picture here, and how can manure and compost be combined in a way that can really uh, change landscapes and, and become a resource and help the climate situation? Yeah, that's a really good question, because one of the problems from what Nicolette was talking about, about separating the, the cows, you know, taking them off the, the rangeland as a kind of a, a regular part of their their day and their lifestyle. And, and actually, I have to say that a lot of um, cows, both in the dairy and the beef industry, s spend part of their life cycle on grass. But they're also confined during part of their life cycle. And, and what the, the big biggest greenhouse gas footprint or climate footprint from um, these industries is from that manure that's piling up, especially in the dairy industry. Um, if you take that material and you just spread it back out on the rangelands, which is what a lot of ranchers do in, in this region and, and in the western U.S., you have a lot of greenhouse gas emissions, particularly nitrous oxide, which is a super potent greenhouse gas. So one molecule of nitrous oxide is like 300 molecules of CO2. So it's way, way more potent. So, so if you just spread out that material out on rangelands, you pretty quickly offset any benefit that you would get by adding that material back on, growing more grass, pulling more CO2 out of the atmosphere. But if you take that material and you mix it with agricultural waste or urban green waste and you compost it, um, you dramatically lower the, the rate at which it, it em emits greenhouse gases. It, it slows everything down. It slows down the rate at which it breaks down. It gives it more chance to work its way into the soil. It sticks around for a longer period of time. Our research is showing now that um, we've seen from a one-time application of compost, just a dusting on rangelands, we've seen an increase in plant growth for six years. It's continuing to go. We see an increase in the soil carbon storage, not just from the stuff we added in that compost, but also from the plants that are growing. And our models, our computer models, suggest that this is probably going to go on for about 30 years, and at about 100 years we'll break even, and then we, you know, then, then, then we're back to where we started again. So this is a potential mechanism to really take carbon that would have blown up into the atmosphere or nitrous oxide, these potent gases, and figure out a way to stick it in the soil and store it for a longer period of time.